Today is Wednesday, March 14, 2018, and here is what's ahead. Pennsylvania's special election is over. We'll show you what's ahead for the state. And then Tillerson is out, Pompeo in. What changes in the President Trump administration might mean for the future of foreign policy? And she's a woman without a country. An update on the Christian facing deportation back to Iran. This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. The special election in Pennsylvania's 18th congressional district is still too close to call. The Democratic candidate claimed victory with only a few hundred votes more than his Republican rival. And many absentee ballots are still left to count. I'm Mark Martin is following this story. The extremely tight race in western Pennsylvania is viewed by some politicians and analysts as a potential bellwether for the midterm elections in November. Overnight, votes were still being counted in the special election. Democratic candidate Connor Lamb said he won the race just after midnight by 579 votes over Republican Rick Saccone. This despite around 1,400 absentee ballots that needed to be counted. It took a little longer than we thought, but we did it. But Republican Rick Saccone was by no means ready to throw in the towel. You know we're still fighting the fight. It's not over yet. We're going to fight all the way to all the way to the end. The Libertarian candidate Drew Miller took in less than 1% of the vote with all precincts reporting, potentially taking away enough votes from Saccone to prevent him from winning. President Trump campaigned for Saccone over the weekend. The president won the district by nearly 20 points in 2016. They're all watching because I won this district like by 22 points. It's a lot. If Lamb does indeed win the race in this GOP stronghold, it could boost the fundraising efforts for Democrats before the November midterms. Lamb claimed he's running as a moderate, but some Republicans questioned that, including the president. Lamb the sham, right? Lamb the sham. He's trying to act like a Republican, so he gets, he won't give me one vote. Republicans had criticized Saccone for being a weak candidate and poor fundraiser. The Republican Party spent more than $10 million on this race. A recount is possible. The National Republican Congressional Committee said they want to make sure every legal vote is counted. Mark Martin, CBN News. And here now is a look at some of the other headlines we're following for you in the CBN newsroom. Prosecutors will seek the death penalty for 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz. Cruz killed at least 17 people at a high school in Parkland, Florida. His attorneys say he will plead guilty to all charges if the death penalty is not pursued. But prosecutors want to seek capital punishment. Meanwhile, thousands of students across the U.S. are expected to leave their classrooms today. They're protesting gun violence and honoring those killed in that shooting. Google says it will ban advertisements for cryptocurrency starting in June. Google announced the decision Wednesday. It is part of a larger crackdown on high-risk financial products. Google said they would also ban ads for other related coin startups. Many people are asking, where is spring after a third nor'easter hit the East Coast Wednesday? This is the third storm, the major one, a major one rather, in two weeks. It brought hurricane force winds, heavy snow, and widespread power outages. Now millions of people are facing another cleanup. You can find more on these stories throughout the day at CBNNews.com. President Trump left D.C. and got an up-close look at the border wall prototypes in San Diego Thursday afternoon. The president examined eight different styles of walls. Prototypes are the barriers he promised to build to keep out illegal immigrants and drugs. President Trump blasted California's Democratic governor, Jerry Brown, on his visit, saying he's done a very poor job of running California. The president has asked Congress for $18 billion to build the structure, but the funding has become ensnared in controversy over a host of immigration restrictions he and Republicans have proposed. For the people that say no wall, if you didn't have walls over here, you wouldn't even have a country. You wouldn't even have a country. And by the way, the state of California is begging us to build walls in certain areas. They don't tell you that. And we said, no, we won't do it until we build the whole wall. On, a visit, on his visit, the president also called on Congress to pass an upcoming bill to fund the border wall and approve a measure to prohibit grants from sanctuary cities who are not complying with federal immigration law. 
Members of the state of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee said that Mike Pompeo's confirmation hearing for Secretary of State will be in April, but they did not specify the date. Pompeo, a passionate ally of Israel, could soon be in charge of U.S. diplomacy as the president takes on high-stakes talks with North Korea. CBN's national security correspondent Eric Rosales takes a deeper look from inside the Beltway. President Trump citing ongoing disagreements led the decision to choose a new Secretary of State. The president pointed specifically to areas including North Korea diplomacy, steel and aluminum tariffs, and the Iran nuclear agreement. I actually got along well with Rex, but really it was a different mindset, it was a different thinking. As Tillerson gave a timeline for his departure, he addressed State Department accomplishments, adding more work needs to be done specifically with Russia, China, and Syria. I'll now return to private life as a private citizen, as a proud American, proud of the opportunity I've had to serve my country. God bless all of you. God bless the American people. The man to replace Tillerson, Mike Pompeo, will face a confirmation process from the same senators who voted to confirm him as CIA director. Pompeo, a West Point graduate and former congressman, is a fierce critic of the Iran nuclear deal and strong supporter of Israel. Also known as a devout Christian, Pompeo is a member of the White House Bible study. President Trump is an outspoken fan of Pompeo, who personally briefs the commander in chief on a regular basis. We're always on the same wavelength. Uh, the relationship has been very good, and uh, that's what I need as Secretary of State. On Capitol Hill, Senator Marco Rubio, who voted for Tillerson despite objections to his Russia ties, called Pompeo an excellent choice. I know him very well. He's uniquely positioned and, and prepared, and um, I think he'll be a great Secretary of State. I'll be an enthusiastic supporter. Democrats paint a different picture. There's a difference between being a CIA director, which is about exerting covert activities throughout the world and gathering intelligence, and the order diplomacy. And he has to show us that he can exhibit those skills. Betnam Ben Talablu of the Foundation for Defense Democracies hopes the administration capitalizes on the timing. He adds the shuffling taking place at Foggy Bottom could be positive for U.S. diplomacy. I think if there is any diplomacy between the U.S. and North Korea, uh, it must be, again, on American terms, and we must share the definition of denuclearization. We can't have one definition in Washington and one definition in Pyongyang. And Pompeo, to me at least, strikes me as the kind of person who would want to stick to that definition. The president's move opens the door for CIA longtimer Gina Haspel, who, if confirmed, would become the first woman to lead the spy agency. Haspel will likely be questioned by Democrats for her work overseeing questionable interrogations of U.S. detainees. She was in charge of a CIA black site prison where detainees face waterboarding and other measures. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Secretary of State Tillerson joins a growing list of top-level departures at the White House. So who has come and who has gone so far and what does the president have to say about the exits? Amber Strong has the story. Like Deja Vu. Rex is a very good man. I like Rex a lot. Another week. My commission as Secretary of State will terminate at midnight, March the 31st. Another resignation. So does the Trump administration have a higher turnover rate than its predecessors? Whether through resignations or those famous words. You're fired. Several high-level officials have departed the White House since 2017. Some of the more notable names include Press Secretary Sean Spicer, Deputy Assistant Sebastian Gorka, White House Communications Director Hope Hicks, Senior Economic Advisor Gary Cohn, Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, Chief Strategist Steve Bannon, and Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price. The Brookings Institution says the number of top staffers leaving this White House is nearly three times the departures of the Obama White House in its first year and double that of Reagan, the previous record holder, out of the last five presidents. It's not abnormal that you would have people come and go. That number suggests the turnover rate is substantial. But here's what the president had to say about it all. The new fake news narrative is that there is chaos in the White House. Wrong. People will always come and go. There is no chaos, only great energy. I'm proud of the opportunity I've had to serve my country. Amber Strong, CBN News, Washington. 
The View co-host Joy Behar publicly apologized yesterday for her comments mocking Vice President Mike Pence's faith last month. Behar compared Pence, Pence's listening to Jesus' voice to mental illness, which set off an outcry of protest. Pence appeared, appeared Monday on Fox News and said Behar called him to apologize, but asked her to make a public apology as well. I said to Joy, of course I forgive you. That's, that's um, part, of, part of my faith experience. But I did encourage her, and I'm still encouraging her, to use the forum of that program or some other public forum to apologize to tens of millions of Americans who were, who were equally offended. So. so, yeah, so I think Vice President Pence is right. Um, I was raised to respect everyone's religious faith, and I fell short of that. I sincerely apologize for what I said. Behar's apology comes one month after her remarks. Coming up, the Swedish government has given 150 protected identities to former ISIS fighters who have returned to Sweden, but they decided to deport an Iranian Christian, sending her back into an almost certain peril. Her desperate plea for help is coming up. Germany's parliament has re-elected Angela Merkel for her fourth term as chancellor. Parliament voted 364 to 315 in a secret ballot to re-elect Merkel, who ran unopposed. Her victory marks the start of Germany's new government. A grand coalition has been formed between Merkel's conservative Christian Democratic Union, its B Bavaria-only sister party, the Christian Social Union, and the center-left Social Democrats. Last year, we brought you the story of Aideen Stransson. She is a Christian from Iran living in Sweden, and the Swedish government has decided to deport her back to her home country. Many of you have asked for an update on her situation. Adele Heard visited her in Sweden as she waits for either deportation or deliverance. Adele Heard brings us a story now from Stockholm. She is a woman without a country. Aideen Stransson is officially a stateless person. No passport, no citizenship unable to get a job, and living every day with the knowledge she could be deported to her native Iran, where, as a Christian, she could face grave danger. A worldwide outcry over her situation has apparently not changed anything. The world was outraged when the Swedish government decided to send a Christian and ex-Muslim back to Iran, where she could be imprisoned, raped, and even killed. But it didn't seem to bother the Swedish government at all. After CBN News first brought the former Iranian actress's story to the world stage, the government of Hungary offered her asylum, and many people from around the world wrote the Swedish government asking it to reconsider. It was uh, really uh, like a miracle for me when um, so many people in America, they called the uh, Sweden embassy. Many people, they send a comment to me and they say, you are welcome to our country. But Sweden's migration board told CBN News none of that matters. Aydin's case has been turned over to the Swedish border police for deportation. Now she waits in a kind of legal limbo. Aydin's situation is not at all unusual in Sweden. There are a fair amount of people who get stuck in between. Swedish attorney Gabriel Donner knows Sweden's asylum process as well as anyone. He represented 160 Christian asylum seekers last year alone. In your experience, should she expect to eventually be deported? She is running that risk, quite obviously. Aydin Stranson came to Sweden from Iran in 2014 on a work visa and adopted a Swedish last name. She left Islam and became a Christian in Iran after seeing a video of Muslims stoning a woman to death. And then she had a dream about Jesus. When she arrived in Sweden, she requested a public baptism. I want to have it baptized in a public because I want to say I don't afraid anymore. I'm free. I'm Christian. I, I want everybody to know about that. Which means the Islamic government of Iran knows. And because she starred in films and a TV series in Iran, it makes her an even bigger target if she is sent back. It's not clear if or when that might happen. Well, when it comes to the border police, it all depends on whose table it lands on. Sweden's backlog is growing and growing and growing. Right now, it's around about two years and growing. This is contrary to European Union law, but nobody cares. Donner says Aydin would first be sent to prison while authorities made arrangements to fly her to Iran. 
This is real prison conditions. They're not allowed to speak in telephones. They're not allowed to be on a computer. They're not allowed to get in touch with anybody. They wear prison clothes. They wore, if they're transferred anywhere, they're transferred in chains. Swedish authorities would then contact Iran and tell them Aydin is coming and when to expect her. Even though Sweden's migration board says on its own webpage it will never deport asylum seekers to nations where they face danger. Doing so is a violation of the Geneva Convention on Refugees. Sweden's migration board says it cannot comment on her case. Aydin spends her days helping at church or training in Taekwondo. She's earned a black belt, but the migration board took her certificate because she's not a legal resident. She thought she landed a job with the technology giant Ericsson as a computer programmer. But the Swedish government wouldn't allow that either. Sweden turned down Ericsson's plea to let her work for them. So as soon as you get your negative, you cannot get any support of any sort, no housing, no place to work, and so on, even if you had a job before. The idea is to starve you to the point where you come to them and say, please send me out. But she's staying in Sweden because her family is here and because she says Jesus told her not to be afraid. Stransson and other Christian asylum seekers in Sweden face deportation at the same time that the Swedish government has given 150 protected identities to former ISIS fighters who have returned to Sweden so that they can find jobs. There will be no such help for Aydin. There have been fast lanes for Syrians. And there have been fast lanes for Somalis. But not for Iranians and definitely not for Christians. We have even one judge here in Stockholm who never has said yes to any Christian. If they're going to act on her case to deport her, she'll get a letter? She doesn't necessarily get anything. They just turn up and can turn up any time. I don't know what will happen for me in future, but I should say to them, thank you to people, to CBN and uh, to you, to all the people try to help me. I just can't say um, Jesus uh, bless them all. Dale heard CBN News, Stockholm. And still ahead, we're going to break down the plant-based eating plan that gets rave reviews from health experts. That story is coming up next. The healthiest diet for your body and your brain is one that is made up of things that grow, like fruits and vegetables. That is the finding from several studies. Alori Johnson takes a look. When it comes to plant-based eating, the Mediterranean diet scores high marks. Colorful vegetables and fruits serve as the foundation of the diet. Leafy greens like spinach, kale, and the rest of the rainbow. Peppers, carrots, eggplant, tomatoes, and blueberries. Legumes like beans are on it, as well as whole grains like old-fashioned oats. Olive oil is a key, as are nuts and seeds. The non-plant foods include fish, some dairy like unsweetened yogurt and cheese, and a little poultry like chicken. Noticeably missing from the Mediterranean and other plant-based diets are sugars and processed grains, which are in most packaged foods. Also missing beef and pork. A panel of health experts examined 40 different diets for weight loss, preventing diabetes, and keeping your heart healthy. The top five diets were all plant-based, like the Mediterranean diet. When it comes to preventing stroke and Alzheimer's, the medical journal Neurology followed 400 people in their 70s and found the people least likely to lose brain volume were those who followed the Mediterranean diet. And a different study found that older people who ate that diet had brains that were five years younger than their actual age. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Some great advice. Stay with us. There's much more of CBN Newswatch coming up right after this.
And welcome back right now. It is time for your Wednesday's word. And today's word is real simple. They come from a song I remember listening to as a child. And there are only four words I'd like to focus on at this hour. This too shall pass. Know this, no matter what you're facing today, tomorrow, or at any time in your life, how difficult it may be, this too shall pass. With that word, make this a wonderful Wednesday. Well, remember, you can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about always at CBNNews.com. And we would love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day for that matter. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. And we'd love to hear from you. You can reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram 24 hours a day. And remember, the news continues always at CBNNews.com. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Goodbye. God bless.